Hey guys, um, I thought I would just do a little homework help video since you guys are working on the homework at home today. Um, so I think I'm just going to do maybe one or two problems per section with you guys. So for number one, that's where I'm going to start. Uh, it says all real numbers that are less than six and greater than two. Um, so when we're saying all real numbers, we are going to assign a variable to that. So all real numbers, we're just going to call that x. So x has to be less than 6 and greater than 2. Now technically you could write the, this as two separate inequalities and then just write and in between them. But there's a proper way to actually write this. Um, it's kind of one big inequality all squished together. And the way that you're going to do this is x is always going to be in the middle. And then you're going to have it surrounded by less than symbols. Remember, less than symbols look like little squished down L's. So those are both less than symbols. So um, we have x in the middle, and then it's less than symbols, and we go least to greatest. So looking at these two numbers, the smallest one is 2. Then x was supposed to be in the middle, and 6 is the greatest. Since x is less than 6 and greater than 2, it's written in between the two. Um, now, some people get thrown off by the fact that this says greater than, but I wrote a less than symbol, and x is supposed to be greater than 2. But remember, this is like an alligator, and the alligator is supposed to be eating the bigger number, and x is the bigger number. So this is, even though it's a less than symbol, it means x is greater than x is greater than 2. We kind of read it uh, backward from the inside out. Um, if that's confusing to you, don't really worry about it. Just remember whenever you have an and inequality, um, and, oops, and inequality, you write it together from least to greatest with less than symbols, and the x always goes in the middle. Um, so that's what you're going to do on um, that one and number three. Number two is going to be a little different because it's not an and inequality, it's an or inequality. So this is going to be written as two separate inequalities and you're going to write or in the middle of them. All right, let's move on to number four. That's the next one I'm going to do. Um, you should probably be working along with me. So if I were you, I would pause the video and do numbers uh, two and three, and then unpause the video when you get to four, because that's the next one I'm going to do. All right, so hopefully now you're ready to do number four. Um, yeah, I think that's a good one to do. So. For number four, we have an and inequality. I know that it's an and because it's written together as one big inequality. Um, and the goal is to get x by itself in the middle of the two less than symbols. So I'm going to rewrite this over here so I have room to solve it because we always want room below so that we can work downward. So the goal is to get x by itself in the middle. The only thing that is in the middle with the x right now is the 5. So I want to move the 5 um, so that it's not with the x anymore. So the opposite of plus 5 is minus 5. But whatever I do in the middle, I also have to do on the other two sides of the inequality. So negative 5, negative 5. Remember, this compound inequality doesn't just have two sides to it, it has three sides. So whatever you do in the middle, you have to do on the left side and the right side as well. Um, 6 minus 5 is going to be 1. We bring the symbol down, so this is still a less than symbol. The only thing left in the middle is x. The less than or equal to symbol comes down. And then 11 minus 5 is 6. So my answer is 1 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 6, which can also be read from the inside out. x is greater than 1, but...
but less than or equal to 6. Then it also says to graph. And inequalities always look like line segments. It's just going to be a line segment that goes from 1 up to 6. I have an open circle at 1 because there was no line underneath on this inequality. And then a closed circle at 6. And then I just draw a line in the middle because x is everything from 1 to 6, between 1 and 6. Right. Um, so that is it for number four. Um, I'm not going to do any more on this section, but I am going to talk about a problem like number seven. Seven is different because it says or. That means um, you're going to have to solve the two inequalities separately. So you're going to solve this one and get, you know, r is less than something, then you'll also solve this one, and you should probably get r is greater than or equal to something. Then when you graph them, it should look something like this. Two arrows pointing away from each other is what number seven is going to look like. Typically, unless it's a weird funky one, like a no solution or an all real numbers, ors will always look like this two arrows pointing away from each other. Ands will always look like this one, a line segment in the middle. All right, um, 10, 11, and 12, I'm gonna have you guys do on your own. Um, All right, so let's look at 14 and 15 next. It says to evaluate the expression. Evaluate the expression uh, means we're going to plug in 4, 4D. So that's gonna be six instead of D, you write what D is equal to, D is equal to four. So instead of D, we put four and we put it in parentheses when we plug it in. We still have this little third power. So all we did was we replaced D with a parentheses four. Um, I'm gonna let you guys finish this on your own, but remember you have to do the exponent first before you multiply together the six times four. So you're gonna do four to the third power, which you remember means four times four times four, and then you'll multiply by the six. All right, um, the next one should be a little bit of an easier problem. All we're doing is we're plugging negative five in for the t. So you're gonna replace t with parentheses negative five. All right, and then the last two, 16 and 17, are just solving. Um, 16 is pretty straightforward. You're just gonna get x by itself. So you're gonna have to move away the nine and the six, but remember, be careful about which one you move away first. Um, and then number 17, you are going to simplify first and then get the z's on the same side and then, um, then isolate z and get z by itself. All right, so now I'm going to do some hints on number 9. Um, so finish up all the problems on day 8 and we'll do... Uh, I'll do a couple of the problems on day nine. Um, I'm going to start with number one. The directions say to solve the following equations for y. Remember that means get y by itself. So I want to get y by itself, which means I need to move some other things away. I need to move away anything that's on the same side as the y. I'm going to rewrite. Well, actually, I have plenty of room, I think. Um, I want to get the y by itself. The only thing I need to move is the 2x. So the 2x needs to go away. away. This is uh, 2x plus y. So the opposite of adding 2x is to subtract 2x. 
But remember, whatever I do to the left side of the equation, I also need to do the, to the right side. These will cancel. I'll be left on the left side with just y. On the right side, I cannot and should not combine those two. The 2x has an x on it. The 7 does not. They are not like terms. The proper form um, for uh, y equals mx plus b is to have the x term first. So I'm going to put negative 2x first, and then I'm going to put the plus 7 second. And then I'm done. So that is my answer for number 1. On any of these that have a number in front of y, you will also have to divide everything by that number that was in front of y. So that'll be the last thing that you'll do. Okay. So try 2, 3, and 4 on your own. And then once you have done those, uh, you can unpause the video and I'll talk about how to do... Um, numbers uh, number five. So pause the video and do two, three, four. All right, so number five it says the volume of a rectangular prism. Um, so V equals length times width times height, L times W times H. And we're supposed to solve for W. So we're supposed to get W by itself, which means we need to get rid of the L and the H. L, W, H means L times w times h. So we have to get rid of the times w times h. The opposite of multiplying by l and h is to divide by l and h. And you can do that at the same time or you could do it one at a time, but it's more efficient to do it at the same time. Whatever we do on this side, we also have to do on the other side. So I'm dividing by l. I'm going to make that look a little more like an l. l times h. The L and the H's cancel on that side. So, should have written this somewhere else, sorry. So, the only thing left on the right side is the W, because the L and the H canceled. The right side is V over LH. Um, so, that's the answer. The proper way to write it is with the W first, or W on the, um, the thing that I solved for on the left side. So I just flipped it around. All right, so remember on the rest of those, the goal is to get um, whatever variable you're solving for by itself. Okay, and then um, nine, you're just using distributive property. Remember, distributive property is just multiplying the number on the outside by the first number or the first term and then also by the second term. Number 10 is the same thing, except um, it's kind of backward. This needs to get multiplied by the 3x and then also by the negative 5. And then the last two are just solving. The goal is to get y by itself, so I need to move away the 2 and the negative 5. You'll move the 2 first. Same thing on this one. The goal is to get r by itself, so we need to move away the negative 4 and the 8. Remember, you only have to flip the inequality if you multiply or divide by a negative. All right, that is it for this hints video. Uh, make sure to finish the homework on your own. Thank you, guys.